Dave, what do you want the world to know about you? Well, I mean, truly, even though I have a rare bone disease, I'm just like everyone else. There's nothing, I don't think, super special about me. Uh, when I was growing up, my family treated me like everyone else. Doctors did tell my parents when I was born, um, shortly after I was born, that they thought it'd be, I'd be fortunate if I were to see my 11th birthday. Well, as I say, in February coming up, I would be 70. So they were just a little wrong on that. They, they missed the target just by a little bit. In my childhood, doctors estimate I broke somewhere between, oh, maybe 200 to 600 fractures in my childhood. That's a lot of fractures. So somewhere between 200 and 600 while you were a kid? While I was a kid. What about your whole lifetime? Oh gosh, I don't know, I've lost count. I gave up counting. I'm coming in, I'm meeting you for the first time. Should I have any reservation about shaking your hand since your bones do break so easily? No, not at all. Because, and this is probably dealing with people with disabilities, you kind of follow their lead. Because when you did come in the house, we did shake hands. But I waited for you to... Yep. And, and if you didn't do that, I would have said, is it okay if I shake your hand? Exactly. And that's what you do. So you did the right thing. What is your diagnosis? My diagnosis is osteogenesis imperfecta, which literally means brittle bones disease. Um, there are eight different degrees of osteogenesis. But yeah, no, you can shake my hand. I've got a... Let me just pour your this hand. And I can go firm. Yep. Yep. Can, yep. But it's, people shouldn't assume they can do that with everybody. Exactly right. Because as I said earlier, osteogenesis has eight different degrees of it. For those that are super brittle, well, you just did that would probably have broken my, my hand or my arm. One time, out in the yard, I played with my friends, swinging a plastic wiffle ball bat. Now, that's a light plastic bat for playing wiffle ball. Just swinging that bat, not hard or anything like that, I broke my wrist. So go figure. Brittle bones, they really are brittle. They break very easy. And sometimes you just never know what's going to break them or when or how. Because my bones are soft, when they would break, and they would break easy back in the day, I would favor them, as I was telling you. When I was young, I'd, I'd be very protective. I'd break an arm, and suddenly I didn't want to use it for, like, forever. So when I used to scoot around on my, on my butt, I'd break this arm and I'd carry it over my lap. And hence it was so soft when it healed, it healed bowed. But because my arms bow in certain ways, I can articulate them to do certain things. But I can't articulate them to do other things. So I've learned with each arm, it each has its own unique capability. So this arm, for example, feeds me. I can feed myself easily. This arm I cannot. This arm will not bend up properly to do that. So this arm does other things for me. What does that arm do? Well, this arm, for example, when I'm doing my toileting, it can help me take care of the back door. <laughs> People who know me well know all the things I go through in life. You yourself don't know because you're just meeting me for the first time. But everything I do in my life, Chris, is a major project. Even sim something simple as toileting. You would not believe what I have to go through. But I go through it every day and you would never know it because I'm happy, I'm upbeat, I'm positive, I don't go through, I don't go through life like that. And so people that really know me really know what I've been through and they go, damn, what's in, I want what's in him, in me. My life, I do not consider it deficient in any way. I've had a wonderful life, frankly. Off camera, you told me about your goal to live to be 100. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Well, I just think it's cool. I just want to be able to you know, have people say, yeah, he lived for 100 years. It's a nice number. I like the number in my head, 100. Um, and, you know... I'm 70 now, I'm 30 years away, and I'm thinking to myself, I think I can do this. I think I can make it. There'll probably be some bumps along the way, but um, my family, my sister thinks I'm crazy, but she she, you know, she wants to check out at 75, so who's crazy, me or her? Um, but <laughs> 100 does not frighten me. I just, I just think it's a good number to be at, and you know, to, li to be able to say you lived a century. And yeah, I, I kind of like that. You're about 70, and you still want to live another 30 years? Yep. You must think life is pretty great. I do. And I'm very excited because I've got a book that I want to get published at some point in my life. But not only that, I just love the fact of meeting people. And I, you know, you never know who you're going to meet around the corner. I love that. I really love that. And right now I'm a single guy. And that someday, at some point, I'd like to maybe meet someone that's my, going to be my soulmate. I don't know. So, yeah, life is pretty good. I, even as crazy as the world is right now. But the world has always been crazy. 
And one of the things I went through at the age of 12, uh, for a boy, which was quite humiliating, was you're on a table, you're in front of a bunch of medical students, sitting there in an amphitheater looking down at you. Oh, man. While they're describing your disease and what you got. And you're on that table with no clothing. So they could see your limbs. Did you agree to that? Or did... I, I had no say in it. It's just something they did. They didn't mean to do it in such a cruel way. Now, mind you, this is back in the 60s. So they probably don't do that anymore. But so you're out there and you've got your wherewithal and you, you get over your humility pretty quick. How old were you? 12. So that That's was, traumatic. It's, it could be. It could have been. It wasn't. Um, I rose above it. But yeah, that's... I've had some pretty tough times in life that make you stronger. What does not kill you makes you stronger. At this stage of my life, at 70 years old, Chris, not too much really uh, rattles you anymore. You've been, when you've been through the, the mill like I have been, and I will tell you, I'm, I always tell people, there are people out there far worse than me. I'm blessed, I'm fortunate, and I've had a lot of good things happen in my life. So I don't look for any pity parties. It just is what it is. You ready for a random question? Yeah. What would you consider the wildest thing you've ever done in your life? Well, I mean, a lot of people would tell you the wildest thing I've done is driving. I mean, I, I drove for 40 years before I gave up driving. I mean, that's, with, you know, with brittle bones, that's a dicey proposition, especially on today's roads. But the wildest thing that I've done personally, um, I would say, well, when I was a kid, I used to do every crazy thing you could think of as a kid. I go sliding down a hill in the wintertime and head for a tree and hit a tree with my sled. You know, my parents let me live my life, let me live my childhood. They didn't keep me sheltered or protected. I'm so grateful for that because I wanted to grow up like any other child, which I did. It seems like your parents never sheltered you, really. No, they didn't. No, they did not. And I'm glad they didn't. Um, they didn't keep me. They would warn me about certain things. And don't do this, don't do that, be careful. But yeah, no, they never forbid me on anything. They... You know, they let me live my life, which was huge. And I would say to any parent out there, if you've got children, you, while you fear for them and you want the best of them, that's all good. But don't hold them back. If they have a desire, they want to try to do something, let them do it. And they may tumble and they may fall or whatever, but uh, holding them back does far more damage. They, can, they will recover from that and they'll be grateful to you for that, truly. 40, 50 years ago, when you were in your early adulthood, yeah. did you go out to the bars and engage in all the normal growing up stuff? Yes, I did. And I'd go out in nightclub and dance. And I usually either always had a lady friend with me or I was on shy about going to the bar and saying, hey, would you like to dance? And I can tell you that when they saw me dancing, they'd say, yeah, they go out there with me. So would you incorporate your wheelchair into your dance moves? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. What I, would you do? Well, you know, you, it's, I have good rhythm. And so, you know, you know how to... You know how to move in rhythm to the song that you're playing, whether it's you're doing a maneuver with a chair or you're doing a maneuver with yourself. Yeah, so I can do it. It was okay. It was all good. I can tell you had some good times. <laughs> I did. I did. I, had, I met a lot of great people. I, and again, I love music. I love people. It was a perfect combination. You seem to be a healthy 69, all things considered. What's your yes. secret? Well, I, you know, I, well, thank you, Chris. Part of that is a D3, I will tell you. But I also try to eat sensibly. Um, I try to get good fiber into my diet, and I try to get good sleep, um, and I think my faith in God, frankly, has sustained me very well. I mean, it's your attitude in life, it's the way you look at things, it's the way you look at problems or challenges in life, and rather than shrinking from them, you, you run toward them, you embrace them, and, and conquer them. So I think that kind of attitude certainly helps. What's it like to be in your 70th year of life as a person with osteogenesis imperfecta? Well, I'll tell you, it's really good because I feel now I know this game pretty well, meaning brittle bones. Um, I know what I can do, what I can't do. I know what I'm capable of doing. And at this stage of my life, too, you get braver, you get more courage, and you're willing to take on things in a more sensible fashion. When I was a younger man, I'd go out and do stuff, and sure enough, I'd push the envelope a little too hard, and I ended up breaking an arm or a leg or a rib. Now I know how hard to push and where I can push and I not sustain any injuries of any kind. What has surprised you the most as you've gotten older? You know, oddly enough, when I was younger, I used to think and wonder about, geez, what am I going to, how am I going to do things when I'm 70 or, you know, I'm 60 and those numbers now have gone by. And I'm realizing that, you know what? Yeah, it's going to be okay. As I get older, 
Again, my Lord will open the doors that need to be opened at the time they need to be opened with the people that need to be there when they're opened. And I, my faith has grown in that because as I've lived my life, I've seen door after door after door open and always for the better and the better and the better. God has put so many amazing people in my life. And Chris Ulmer is an example of that right now here today. I, I can't begin to tell you all the people that have come into my life at different stages. Some stay for seasons, some stay for years. Uh, it's all good. It's all meant to be. Thank you because you're giving me a chance to get out there mm -hmm. and to talk about certain things. And also, I really do hope some of your listeners, your viewers out there do see this and reach out to me, um, especially when it comes to the books. Tell me about those books. Well, I, I, the book that I want to get published most of all is one that's a memoir of my life. It's called Born of Winter. By that title, I mean out of my life of, of winter, which has been real with brutal bones disease. The bones are serious and they hurt, but I've learned a lot from that. And I've, a lot has outcropped from that, including my relationships with people, how I deal with them, my own life, how I view my life. You want people who know about publishing and can help you with that to reach out to you? Yes. Yeah, you know, publishers, especially if they are looking for this uh, kind of an idea, I'd like them to contact me because I would like to get it published. Do you have any regrets? No, um, not really. I mean, you know, you look back at your life and you say, well, I could have or should have done this or that. But then you realize, you know what, hindsight's always twenty twenty, And so you can never do that to yourself or you should never do that to yourself. And while I say I want to live to be 100, whether I get there or not, it's been a very good life. It's been a good ride. Um, and that's always been true. I've always felt that way. I've always been very optimistic. I'm not one for being pessimistic. I, I've always viewed the glass half full, never half empty.